Hello, welcome back to my channel. Oh, it seems to be a bit weirdly lit in here. Just bear with me. I'm not entirely sure why. I've tried cleaning the lens, but it seems like hazy around the edges. So my apologies for the lighting. Outside is quite grey. Um, you might notice my hair's in a really odd style, but you will know why in a minute. So it's Palette Day 16, and I'm using the Naked 2 Basics palette. And the reason I'm using this is because it today specifically, and you'll notice I haven't got any base on or anything, is the first of the collab challenges that I'm doing with Victoria J, When Tanya Talks, and The Love of All Things Beauty, Claire, Tanya, and Victoria. Um, you may know that we just finished the Colours of the Rainbow Challenge collab. <clears throat> and because we'd finished that, we thought we didn't want to finish all together we really enjoyed working together and collabing and coming up with ideas and seeing what each of us could come up with so we decided to do well actually Claire thought of the idea and we thought it was brilliant and it was the makeup through the ages challenge and starting at 1920s which is why my hair's in this really odd style um, we decided to take on the challenge of um, our interpretation of the 19. 20s all the way up to now so it's going to be quite a long challenge there may be people that um, join in uh, there may be people that won't be able to do every time we do it but basically it's every two weeks every two Fridays six o'clock uh, on a Friday so you'll know what when to expect it and if you're you know if you want to continue watching us doing this then please do so so um, I am starting with the so yeah, um, sorry about that. I um, So I've decided to sort of incorporate it in Palettober and then obviously once Palettober's over, it will become our bi-weekly um, normal video. But I didn't want to do just two looks. There's no point in doing that. I might as well incorporate it, especially as I decided that this would be a perfect palette. So a little bit of background about the 1920s. It's sort of post-World War um, One obviously, pre-World War II. Um, makeup was sort of worn quite differently. I think coming out of the war, there was a lot of people that were feeling the depression. Um, it was um, a really strange time, but fashions changed quite a lot. You saw these, instead of the bustly dresses, the over Victorian sort of style, you got these um, long flapper dresses, you got um, more um, lacy and, and sequiny and, and all elaborate, but in a very muted way. And that sort of went with the makeup as well, <clears throat> which was <clears throat> quite solemn. And um, I'm going to try my best to replicate um, what I believe is the 1920s style. I'm even going to, I've tried to sort of dress myself up a bit more 1920s by wearing a um, quite high neck, but not Victorian um, lacy top which sort of comes here like this and comes off the shoulder actually it's a top that's back to front <laughs> I'm not gonna lie it's not something I actually own I don't have any flapper dresses or anything that's got any sequins or um, I don't know beading or anything across the top I thought this might be the closest to uh, what it might have looked like so I won't gal balloon anymore because this is going to be the longest video ever and in the 1920s, they really wanted to keep their skin sort of pale. There was no luminosity because the blush did all the work. So I'm going to take <clears throat> my corrector palette, <clears throat> excuse me, first of all. And I'm going to use this, <clears throat> excuse me, I don't know why I've got a frog in my throat. Taking the salmony orange colour in the middle there, and I'm going to use the mirror in this because it's the only one I have and just place that on where my dark circles are. It really helps to um, get rid of, you can sort of see the difference already, the dark circles under the eye. And the same on the other side. Okay, I'm taking the lilac colour and putting that on the top of my lids because they're quite brown and I believe that 
the lilac colour can cancel out the brownness. The reason I'm doing this is because I'm going to try and make my face as sort of all over the same colour as possible. I want it to be a blank canvas. Um, and you'll also notice that they, they used a lot of sort of powder foundations. It almost looked like talcum powder that they were sort of putting on their face, um, which, you know, we don't use today. It is in products though. Um, just taking the green concealer to cancel out any reds in my face. Uh, just on the cheeks here. And on my nose here. You can see it looks a bit clowny at the moment, but when I blend it out and then add foundation on top, it does make a difference. Just using it there, around my lip area. And I've got some sort of broken capillaries around my nose. I suffer terribly, or I used to at least, um, from allergies and um, which hence the sniffing a lot of the time. Very sensitive nose and um, through blowing it constantly as a child, it's just left some quite unsightly red marks under my nose um, and it's really annoying. So I'm gonna take my beauty blender, sorry about how dirty it is. I'm just gonna pat that out. Just to blend that in a little bit better to the skin. Already I look quite pale, especially compared to my neck. I'm going to use my um, light BB cream and it's such a good colour to take my skin right down to a light colour. This is perfect for me um, in terms of I do use a powder over the top normally and um, I do use a bronzer a lot of the time so this is a great sort of light yellowy foundation but it's actually a BB cream um, that takes my skin down to a really light colour. I need to work quite fast here actually when I think about it because I've got to get through quite a lot of the video. You can see how pale it makes my skin, which is fine. That's I want to kind of get it right to that pale porcelain doll kind of colour. Now, I'm going to take, oh no, not that. <laughs> going to make my skin bright red and um, the freedom pressed powder in a it's a translucent one and i'm going to use a big brush no i'm not that's i'm going to take the concealer first and it's the maybelline eraser eye i'm just going to put that under my eyes here not to brighten but to conceal and down my t-zone i always forget to do concealer because i use it pre um i use it pre foundation normally i'm really excited about it. i've seen some of them already because i'm quite late doing it because of palettober i've been doing all of my videos sort of in advance but only a day in advance to get it you know lined up and ready um so yeah i'm excited to see what the others have done i've seen a couple already i'm, I'm the last one i think um, and then I'm just using that translucent powder just to give my skin that sort of matted finish. I don't want it to be too dewy, which I normally do. Dewiness is my favourite. Um, but with this, I want it to really matte down. There you go. Okay. So, I'm... Oh, I didn't prime my eyes. Just bear with me. So I've bought it. I found it now. Uh, using the cap. This is actually a really good colour tattoo to use because you're going to be um, using dark colours on your eyes. This is the on and on bronze, the one I'm trying to pan. And I'm just going to use that all over the lid. I'm not going to put a ton on though. All over the lid and all over the brow bone going to blend it in with my fingers. I'm not putting on as much as normal. I just want to have a small base. I'll probably use the rest of it on this side. Yeah. I'm just going to blend it up into the brow bone. There we go. Lovely. Right. 
so oh okay I'm leaving stuff open on the uh, bed which probably isn't very good so I'm going to start with let me think about this okay I do have a picture that I'm sort of going by and I'll show you that first because it might be helpful to use to see what I believe is a really good 90s look, uh, 90s, 1920s look. Can you see that? There you go. So I'm going to use that. She is fair, but that's okay. I'm actually going to use, I'm going to do my eyebrows first, I think. Great. <laughs> All right, eyebrows first. And I'm going to use this palette to do that. Oh, it's very difficult to get into this palette um, and I'm going to use my um, accent brush I'm just gonna fill them in because what they did was they used to make them a lot longer so sort of going right into the nose right up and over really arch them quite far down do you see how far down that's gone a lot further than you probably would nowadays same with this side really darkening them up as well but they didn't have them thick so it was still you know quite oh dear me there's my um quite slender eyebrows we'll even those up shall we there we go just Make that a little bit more eyebrow -y. Oh, That's so funny. <laughs> I certainly wouldn't be going out like this. Definitely not. Um, and then I'm going to take a, oh, what brush am I going to take? I'm actually going to take my um, base shadow brush and I'm going to use the colour cover and I'm going to use that, weirdly, right up into the brow bone right up here it's a really odd place to put it but it is sort of how they used to have it really making the eyes look very drawn down but also quite big and just big and solemn think betty boop that's very much the and it goes right in there whoa yeah that's definitely how i would imagine it Right in. You lot are going to think I'm mad. This is never anything I would ever do normally, ever. But this is the challenge, you know. Let's look at how they used to do it. Look at the things they used to do. It's a really odd thing to do. But I sort of like it. Right. They brought it right into sort of where the nose is here. So it's shadowed right in like that. Can you see what I've done? I look horrendous. I look like I've got huge eyebrows. But do you know what? I'm going to keep going because I want to give this a really good try. Um, and then they did used to put quite a dark colour on their lids, really making the eyes look quite down. So I'm going to use Undone, which is the darkest colour in here. I'm going to put that all over the lid. Just like so. I wouldn't put black on my eyes. This is a dark brown. And the reason I wouldn't put black on my eyes is be on like as an eyeshadow is because I think it might look a bit too much. I want to put some eyeliner that um, sort of makes it do what I want it to do. But I think you need to use a darker brown. There we go. So as you can see, I've done really dark on the lids and then that brown. So it's almost a lighter brown, but still dark. I am going to take the cream colour in this and just put that right into my brow bone just to sort of define what's going on there. Give the eyebrows a little bit of definition. 
I don't know whether you guys can see, I haven't really been sitting that close, have I? So just like that. Then I'm going to take, hmm, where is my accent, my accent brush. I'm going to use um, uh, Primal, which is this colour here. So I used that one all over the brow bone, this one over the lid, and this one I'm going to put just under the eye. And really darken it under the eye. The same on the other side. This accent brush is so good for kind of lower lash line work that you don't want to be too precise. You know, you want it to be a bit more um, fuzzy. Is that a word? Yeah, fuzzy. And then I'm going to take my eyeliner. And I'm actually going to draw my eyeliner in sort of a, a moon shape over my eye and bring it down a bit because the whole point is you're meant to look a bit solemn but your eyes are meant to look bigger as well. So taking my eyeliner, I'm just going to take it across first and then I'll fill it in and I'll show you what I mean. So take it across the eye but bring the point just down slightly rather than flicking out, just a tiny bit down. And then... Going in again, I'm just going to make this bit here just slightly bigger. Not moon shaped, but sort of curved. Take it right into the corner as well. Like so. Can you see what I've done there? And I'm going to do the same with this eye. Taking the eyeliner into the corner and all the way along as you would normally. How many minutes are we in? Okay, not too many. I was a bit worried. And taking it, as I said, down. Need some more. It's drying out. This is such a shame. Somebody suggested to me to get the collection ones, so I'm going to give those a go. Just taking it down at the corner just slightly, just to give it that more solemn look. And then, just give it a shake. I'm going to increase the curve here. Just make it that bit bigger in the middle. There you go. I'm going to take my blending brush <clears throat> and I'm going to blend what I did up here and just make it a bit softer. And the same on this side. And then I'm going to take my mascara and apply that to my lashes. Now, I don't know actually, I'm going to have a quick look because I don't know if they applied it to their lower lashes. I have a feeling they did. Uh, yeah, just slightly, just slightly. The best bit's coming up. Oh, the lips. And in the 20s, they wanted to, it's that doll look, isn't it? The sort of big eyed doll with um, proper cherry sort of lips. Or what I would say, like cherry lips. Um, put a bit on the lower lashes, but not much. Not like uh, spidery. Same on this side. So like I say, they had pale faces, but what they did use, <clears throat> my favourite bit, is... A rouge on the cheeks and I have this really gorgeous colour from Makeup Revolution. It's a matte. I didn't want to be dewy like I say. Um, it's a matte blush called New Rules. Certainly is some new rules for me. I'm going to attempt to put that right on the sort of this bit of the cheek. Oh my goodness. Now that is some sort of pigmentation isn't it? I am going to blend that. Oh, that's an 
<laughs> there he is. <laughs> I'm blending that out big time. <laughs> you don't want to look like uh, Aunt Sally now if you're not from the UK and you don't remember Wes or Gummidge because you're too young. You won't know what I mean by that. <laughs> I'm just going to really blend that out. It's really, that's better. But still quite, you know, what you want is for it to be quite prominent on the cheek. Like sort of in the middle it's a really odd place to put it but that's what they did and <clears throat> I'm going to take a little bit of concealer and conceal my lips because the lipstick this is the exciting bit so I'm going to line my lips first I'm using the essence lip liner in 08 red blush and I'm going to take the liner up the lip just over here look just up slightly and then I'm gonna miss out some of this lip here and here and the same here So it makes it almost like a little high, um, I don't know how to explain it, lip thingy. I'm taking the Rimmel 22 um, colour, Rimmel by Kate. And that is the look. Ah, almost. Wait there. And there you have it. So that is the 1920s look. We're using the Naked Basics palette. Um, thank you so much. This is the first of our collabs. I'm so excited. I will link them all below that have joined me in this collab. If you want to join in the collab yourself, then please let me know because um, there is room. There is room for anybody to join in. Make up through the ages. You've got two weeks if you want to do the 1920s one. Um, and then we're obviously doing 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, 2000s and now. Um, so yeah, I look forward to seeing you all in my next video and um, yeah, take care. Oh, subscribe to everybody that I mentioned down below. Um, thumbs up this video if you're enjoying it. Let me know what you think and um, yeah, yeah, comment down below. Take care. Bye.